This is Tech Unmuted, the podcast of modern collaboration, where we tell the stories of how collaboration tools enable businesses to be more efficient and connected with your hosts, George Shanestein and Santi Cuellar. Welcome to Tech Unmuted. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Tech Unmuted. And today, today, I am here with a very dear friend and colleague from across the pond, <laughs> uh, Sam Husband. Sam, welcome to Tech Unmuted again. This is your second time, second appearance on the show. Yes, thank you so much for inviting me, Santi. It's a pleasure to be here. Got some really interesting stuff to go through today. Uh, we sure do. I can't wait for this uh, for this particular podcast because we will be talking and looking at two different AI image generating platforms, and we're going to be matching them up against each other and see what outcomes we get. And we're talking about about Mid Journey, right? Which is one that you're very familiar with. You use it quite a it bit. Is. Yeah. And then Dolly, which is a a competitive a competing platform, right? Uh, which, by the way, uh, anybody can have access to Dolly because they've embedded it inside of Microsoft Microsoft Bing. So if you go to your Microsoft Edge browser and you click on Bing, you'll see the Copilot window. And guess what? Those images are being generated by Dolly. And so this will be fun today. This will be really good. And what's what's really interesting is I've I've been using Mid Journey for nearly a year now. We have a yeah. paid prescription subscription, sure. um, but obviously the Bing is free, open to everybody. So interesting, yeah. It's a good test today to see if it's something that I could switch to. Yeah, um, to that's, save a good, both that's a good time point. And budgets. That's a good point. I will say that uh, it, it it looks like it's still in preview, and I think they give you like thirty uh, prompts that you're allowed to do per day or something of that okay. of that degree. Yeah, yeah. So. But I, I'm sure there's probably some advanced version out there. But I agree. I think we just let's just use the tool um, as we have it. Uh, you know, there are some pros and cons to both of these, like anything else, right? Uh, you get different results, right? Uh, depending on depending on which one you use. Um, Dolly seems to be what they consider best when when you're trying to create something that's uh, a consistent artwork, right? Uh, to your exact requirements. They, they they feel that Dolly is a little bit more consistent. I don't know, we're about to find out. Um, uh, when it comes to when it comes to the cons, right? Dolly will refuse to generate images of copyrighted characters, which I found very interesting. Not only that, it will it won't let you ask or the art style of any living artist. And I found that fascinating that they have these restrictions built into Dolly. I'm not so sure that these things exist in Mid Journey, do they? No, Mid, Mid Journey seems a bit more relaxed when it comes to, to requesting styles and inspiration. But we'll put Dolly to the test today. We'll yeah. see We'll see if it rejects some of our, our requests. Yeah. And and my, my understanding is that Mid Journey uh, as a pro seems to be the best for expressiveness and let that artistic flair um I will again we'll take a look at that and see if that's the case that's the case but um doing some research apparently it falls short when it comes to generating hyper realistic images and um i think if we're going to create something <laughs> to really challenge these two things we should probably be creating something that's hyper realistic just to put it to the test so um, yeah, we give, we give it a try. Let, let me ask you one thing before we, we start. Now, as I said, I've been using this for a year and we have yeah. been creating some very abstract artistic images. My yeah. background behind me is, is one of them. Yeah. But I'm torn on whether AI can be creative. Does yeah. it understand creativity or is it just constructing based on large databases? What do you think? So um, I'm going to just based on my understanding of of the evolution of AI over the last 10 years and all these different modules, right? Um, I'm going to say that AI has come to the point where there is a certain level of artificial comprehension. All right. Scary. It is scary. It is scary. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, in other words, 
when machine learning first came out, it was pretty straightforward. It was a machine that would continue to fail and fail and fail until it finally gets a pass. And when it passes, it would remember what steps it needed to take to pass to get the results that you wanted. And so it did that at, at, at a much quicker speed than any human could possibly do. And so that's what machine learning is all. Machine learning has been around for a while, but it doesn't, it, it wasn't necessarily comprehending what was actually happening, right? It's just, it was just learning. These new large language models that use natural language processing, that use visual computing, um, are actually to some degree comprehending what the prompt is, what they're actually reading. Like for example, um, if, if if you if you if you give an AI an image, an AI that has a a visual component to it, it will look at the image and comprehend. Hey, this is an image of a dog. Oh, by the way, it's a bulldog. <laughs> I mean, it will know what it's looking at, and so. I do think there's a, a, a level of comprehension, and I may even push the envelope here and say that maybe there's a, a slight uh, uh, feel or level of some, some sort of uh, artificial consciousness, honestly, because of the amount of comprehension and, and, and input that it's able to process. It's almost kind of scary. But yeah, I think, we're, I think it is comprehending. Well, that is very apt to the, one of the prompts that we're going to use today. Oh, that's good. Do, do you think that crosses over into the AI understanding language? So we're talking about art here, but if we think about it from a code creation or solving mm. IT problems, yeah. do you think it now comprehends the question and the solution and it can write code? For sure. I, yeah. So, so, you know, code, code is nothing more than a language. So it is, right? So when you're talking about programming uh, and coding, all you're really doing is you're writing something in a specific language that that your system can under, under understand and comprehend. So these AI mo modules are absolutely learning the language. And so, in fact, it will generate a unique set of codes based on parameters you give it. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's an output or an executable that nobody's ever thought about before, but it can do that because it absolutely understands the language. And this is why I'm saying that it is, it, it, there is a, a, a certain level of, of artificial comprehension here because it is able to write something based on your, 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 your input. So it is fascinating. It really is. I, I, think, I think that discussion probably mutes the copyright laws and the infringement from an art perspective because it is creating new art based on prompts brand brand new inspired by other people yes but it's the same as we get into the code side of things as well this is fresh new code and new problems that it's solving it is i think i think it's like anything else i think uh, uh, artificial intelligence is able to learn different styles different color tones different approaches to art it's able to learn these things comprehend them and then and then decide to use them when appropriate based on the prompt um mm -hmm. i don't th i don't think it's plagiarizing i think it's just it's learned the the the, the style approaches to uh, uh from other artists in the past i mean it, it studies it that then again we're back to that comprehension it is comprehending that and so um i think it's going to get to a point where i, I honestly we're just touching the surface now, but we, we're at a point now where this is, AI is finally at a, at a point where we have a launch pad. And now over the next several years, and it's gonna happen fast, fast, because we kind of broken all the barriers that were kind of holding us back. Now it's just, now it's just how, how far we wanna take it. Over the next 10 years, I think AI is going to evolve faster than any other technology we've seen in our lifetime. So that's yeah. a great segue into the prompt. So should we should we dive in and? Sure. So tell you what, why don't you share your screen and you, uh, you'll 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 have both Mid Journey, and um, and so while you do that, what we're going to try and do today, because it's kind of hard to rate these things, 
I, I think we just give give it give it a scale of one to ten um, when we're looking at these uh, these images. And mm -hmm. and Sam, let's you and I take into account just a few things when we're trying to rate it. Uh, let's look at realism. You know, how closely does it resemble you know uh, the real world or, or or scenes? Let's look at the detail. Let's rate that. Let's look at color and saturation. Maybe some creativity. To your point, how creative was it with based on the prompt? And I guess artistic value, which is really more of a, does it have that aesthetic appeal, right? And so we'll look at those five things, and then you and I can just give it a one to ten and see what happens. So. Okay, so for for anybody watching, um, you'll see that I'm in my one of my Discord servers for for art generation. You'll see some tests that I've done above. Um, just because of the topic, uh, I thought it would be interesting to create some art that was generated or or inspired, sorry, by the Matrix, the movie Matrix. Nice. Um, and I've got a couple of different prompts that should produce very different um, outcomes. So the first is we're asking Midjourney to generate a hyper realistic and lifelike software engineer who created the first AI machine. Surrounded by futuristic AI driven city, and then we want to give it some character. So we've asked it to be artistic, use the word noir to give it some moody feel, um, and then cyberpunk because we know it's a very common form of art online sure. um, and inspired by the movie Matrix, as I said. And to add some detail, I'm asking it to use an Unreal Engine 5 animation as kind of the output. And so all right. That's in. Let's see what that produces. Now, one of the things that I really like about Mid Journey is the speed. Sometimes, if it's a really busy time, um, it could take a few seconds. But as you can see here, the, the oh, speed is, is is already creating. It always produces a grid of four, so you have a choice. Sure. And then Dolly does the same. Yeah, Dolly oh, does fantastic. the same. fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing if Dali has the same variability and and able to change and upgrade and expand, etc. So I will tell you right off the bat that what I love about Midjourney is that you could see the process being created, right? The process, the image. Whereas in Dali, it just shows you the image. Like it doesn't show you that the process. It just kind of just here's my results. So this is interesting. Um, and are these are these is this one big image with four or can you click on these individually? Yeah, so so once you expand and have a look, you choose your preferred option. Mm -hmm. So they're all quite interesting, but I think we should go for the top right. The first image that it produced. Yeah, I'm simply going to upscale that image. And you have options you can upscale by the power of 10 to make it incredibly high res. Very really nice. Detailed. You can also vary regions. So if there's a small piece on there that you don't like, you can go into that image and you can just change that one particular region. Oh, that's awesome. It's it's not a design tool per se. Obviously, mm -hmm. when you're in charge of producing this kind of art, the requests that come back to change this, 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 and the tiny detail sure. aren't possible. Sure. Um, but it's every month or so, it's bringing out a new iteration where we can change. But I, I would say that this has done a really good job of being hyper realistic. It, the detail I, I, is. I like is it. Immense. I like it. Yeah, I like the shadowing on the faces. See how the lighting casts a shadow in certain parts of the face. I really like this. All right, you know what? I, I, now I'm excited. Let, let's go to Dolly. <laughs> I want to see this. Yeah. So now. drop in the same prompt now. Now for those who are watching, uh, basically Sam is inside of of uh, Microsoft Edge, which is Microsoft browser. And he just hit that copilot icon and just dropped in the same prompt into the text field. So just hit send. So I'm, go I'm just going to ask you a question before I do yeah. because I've ne I've never actually used this before. This is the yeah. first time that I've used Dali. Yeah. Now in um, Mid Journey, it mm -hmm. knows that it's going to be creating an image, so I don't have to say same create here. a photo of. Okay. Same here. So it will. Can be it, yeah, it will comprehend what you're trying to do. Watch, you'll see. Uh, I asked myself the same question because I didn't. I want to. I want to know. Hey, should I be creating some type of? Well, wow! Look at this. This is interesting. interesting. 
uh, uh, this is interesting. So tell you what, let's just stop the responding. And then just add the the prompt at the beginning, create an image and then drop in your 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 rest. That's interesting. I have done it to where I just drop in the the prompt without necessarily saying create an image and it will know that I'm trying to create an image. OK, it right, understood like the language. Well, oh. look at this high demand. Can you believe that? And so this is what happens when you do a live podcast. Yeah, <laughs> but this is telling. So we talked at the beginning mm -hmm. yeah. around. Is this something that we can realistically use yeah. on a free basis? Sure. Now, if if you don't pay for the premium uh, upgrades in mid journey, it has exactly the same problem. It will pick and choose based yeah. on usage um, when you can generate and you only have a very limited amount. But let's some, try it again. It, it will change let's from see. second to second. Yeah, let's try it again. See if it'll give you a pass this time. Everybody decided to use Dolly today. That's what, yeah, interesting. Okay. So, so I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll mm -hmm. jump back to mid journey. Yep. And we'll run a uh, prompt that's very, very similar, but it's got a slightly different top and tail yep. just to see the different um, output. And then we'll come back later and see if uh, Dolly's up for the challenge. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. So I really, I really love this whole mid journey AI platform. This is amazing. Okay. So, um, for anybody not watching, the difference in prompt is yeah. instead of asking for a hyper-realistic and lifelike software engineer, we've asked for a cartoon for software engineer. And instead of being inspired or utilizing Unreal Engine 5 as a, an animation tool, we've asked it to style like a Warner Brother classic cartoon. Oh, nice. Apart from that, the middle prompt is exactly the same. Got it. Yeah. You see, it has to comprehend what you're asking it, right? I mean, mm. it can't generate these things unless there's some form of comprehension, right? Uh, and putting it together. Look, look how I love this because the image starts to appear like in phases. And this is why I love about mid journeys. I can see the process of the image being created. Um, do you find, do you find that a lot of times the first one created is the best one. Ah, oh, I don't think I know the answer to that because we use we use a, all of them. Uh, there, right. there isn't there isn't generally one that's worse or better. Right, right, right. Um, and because most of our requests are very similar um, for the style that we want, I think it's just pot luck where it appears. Man, okay, so look at so the details here. The the detail is amazing. The colors are incredible. Um, obviously, the prompts are quite simple, and because the prompts are simple, it's ad living more. So normally we have prompts that could be five, six, seven sentences long. This is one, um, right? But, but that produces such an array of styles or colors and and tones and creativity. But that's where it's being creative when you give it less information it's forced to provide bigger options. Um, I think we should upscale top left. I you think I agree. Yeah, so top left is is much more colorful. Yeah, like, like the, that. The, the the engineer in the middle is more central, very similar to um, similar to the hyper realistic piece. So that's what you do. You hit the U2 for upscaling the second image and there you go. Wow, look at this. And, and, and here you can see the different. You, could, you sure. could vary it slightly that might get rid of the birds in the background or you yeah. could, or you could um, vary it strongly and that might actually change the computers you, to to uh, servers. Can you just bring up the image uh, full size so I can see. Look at that. Oh, look at the details on the suits. Yeah, it's really you see, cool. yeah, the, the create. Okay, so listen, there is creativity. 
right? I mean, there is creativity there. And this is a unique image. Like there's no, there's no other image like this on the web right now. Nothing, 100% unique. And, and that, you can see, for, for like me, for, for fans of the movie The Matrix, you can mm -hmm. see that there is inspiration drawn from it. Yeah. But nothing exact. Yeah. So it has it has the right style. It has some of the the landscape shots, but it's not ripped off from. Correct. Um, so from, I wonder if Dolly's working. Let's go check yeah, out let's Dolly. Get <laughs> let's get back in. Come on, Dolly. This is your time to shine. We go back to the original request. Yeah. The, realist, the realistic piece. Yeah. See if it takes it this time. So for those who can't see, basically, we're getting a warning saying that it can't create the image right now due to high demand. So, uh, and again, this is just Dolly built into uh, Microsoft Edge, right? So. We are not in luck. We are not in luck. So, while we would love to match up these two platforms, this free version of Dolly is just not working, um, which is a shame, because I think it would have been cool to see the, the differences. Um, all right. Oh, wait, it is generating something, isn't it? Scroll down. Oh, no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. I'm going yeah. to give it one more go. Yeah. And. Now, we, we all know nope. that yep. uh, me, me being in the UK, it's three o'clock. It's everybody's downtime right now. So <laughs> uh, I'm surprised that it's saying. Uh, no, because this is this is the slow time. But of course, so, for you, it's it's first thing. So you know what? What I what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little test of my own. Why don't you? I think you have a third prompt, right? I do. Why don't you go ahead and create the third prompt on Mid Journey, and let me see if I can get these images created on Dolly while you do that. And then oh, if that if, if if I do have success. I'll just share my screen and show you the uh, results. Now, the third prompt, it's the same middle prompt, um, but we're asking for a pencil drawing of a software engineer and to be inspired by a well-known pencil artist. I must admit, I'm not a, a fan of, of pencil artists, um, so I had to look up who was who was popular. And we have we have a Donna Care. Um, uh, I don't know much about the artist, right. but we shall see if it picks up a certain style. Now, I think it's quite easy to comprehend how you could go from lifelike to cartoon because we've had filters that have done that for years. But going, yes. from, going from lifelike to a detailed pencil drawing, not an outline drawing. A detailed pencil drawing is a very, very different style of of generation. So, wow, look at this! That is mm. unbelievable. Look, so very, very nearly done. Oh my goodness! Look. Now the, the the detail in these is magnificent. But no, this is this is mind-blowing look at yeah. the detail look at the tones and the the edges and wow is that let's, a hand yes let's, let's upscale uh, the first one yeah uh by the way dolly is working for me mm. so i will have images to show and i'm actually going to go ahead and drop in the other prompts while you walk us through mid journey and then i'll switch screens and show everybody what i have but it is very interesting the results i think uh i think you'll be surprised okay over to you santi all right let me uh let me sh switch to share bring my screen up <clears throat> so I dropped in the exact same prompt uh, you did, right? Hyper-realistic and lifelike software engineer who created the first AI machine surrounded by a futuristic AI-driven city, uh, exact same prompt. And these are the results that I got. 
this is the first image. This is oh, the uses text. It uh, it does use text Big sometimes. Difference. I know. Look at look at this. Look at the second image. Look wow. at the third. Look at this one. But here's what I find interesting. There is a woman. That is wonderful to see. So yes. there's, there's been some big debates around Mid Journey and the fact that it's stereotypes. Maybe because I mean, you we said software engineer. We didn't say anything about a male or female, and it threw in a female software engineer into the mix. And look at the details. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. Um, so that was look at this. Look at this one. The the second so, one, right? So instantly, I think the feel is a bit grander, a bit more movie esque. Um, hmm. They they all feel like they would be amazing front covers for an for a sci-fi movie interesting look at this one with the skull on the back of the jacket it's just fascinating all right so so anyway so that was your first prompt um let's see it should have generated the image for the second prompt already because i had yep and sure it did so here is your second prompt now the second prompt was the cartoon one right cartoon software engineers and it says here Look, look at the response Dolly's giving me. I see you have changed your prompt. I'll try to create a new graphic art based on your new prompt. <laughs> so here's the first one. Again, look at this. Very different. Very different. Very different from 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 the mid journey. I, uh, look I, at this I one. I think I think that comes down to its interpretation of the word classic when we've asked for a classic Warner Brothers style. Right. And look at this fourth one. Look at this fourth one. Now, in this case, it mm. did it did give us four men. There was no female in this one, um, which I find interesting. OK, well, you know what? I really now I'm really curious. Let me go grab the third prompt, the one you just did with the uh, pencil. Let me just Grab that real quick. And let's drop it in here. By the way, as you can see, I'm not really prompting it to create an image. It knows I'm trying to create an image. At no time did it. So it's interesting how you had a different result than, than I did. And, and now you get to see the generation process, right? How it generates it. You'll see that it's not it's not as as exciting as mid journeys, right? So it gives me a little prompt, a little response. Oh, see, that's interesting. <laughs> so so it's actually given a description of the artist that in in copy and text form that we have not asked for. And it's also mm -hmm. looks like it's showing us to her website. It's giving us more detail about her, but what an amazing Fasc piece. Fascinating, right? It's fascinating. And now see, this is what I'm talking about. I don't see the images being created. I just get this this placeholder that says, hey, we're generating your image, right? So it's to me, it's not as exciting. I'm just waiting for it. With Mid Journey, you kind of see it like the layers coming in, right? And um, so it's, it's a different experience. I do love the fact that it gave me the extra history and background on the artist that we selected. That is just fascinating. Uh, she won several awards, exhibited her drawings, many galleries and museums. I mean, it just gives you this amazing response. Oh, oh, look, Sam, Sam, yeah. look, look. Another female and look at the details. Now, now, interestingly, I think this looks more like a hand-drawn pencil yes. drawn by, by an incredible artist, albeit, yes. than it did on Mid-Journey. That is true. That it, look at this one. Same. Yeah, it actually yeah, it, looks it, so it, really, it really does look like somebody sat down and did it by hand. 
Well, I think this has definitely added another tool to our creative armory. Yeah. Yeah, so long, so long as it's not being overwhelmed by others using it. <laughs> I think the, the, the piece that sticks out for me is that the difference, same prompt, different outcome. So when you're using all AI tools and you're, let's go back to the code discussion, you need to create a piece of code to fix a certain problem. Yeah. How different is one piece of code generated in GPT going to be from another piece of code that gets to the, exactly the same answer, but in, an, in a different tool? Yeah. Obviously, with art, it's a bit more creative. It's not as linear, is it? There's, there's probably a lot more options, um, but that could be an interesting thing to test next. It is fascinating. So if I had to rate the overall experience of Mid Journey to me, is a better experience than using Dolly inside of Bing, right? Just the overall experience, the whole platform, the 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 way it 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 layers in the final image. You can kind of see it being produced before your eyes. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to Bing, I love the fact that it gives you a response. Because in, in, in all, in, with all prompts, it gave me a response. I said, hey, let me work on that. Oh, by the way, that artist that you want me to mimic, let me tell you a little bit about her while I'm creating your image. I, I think that's just phenomenal, yeah, very, right? Very good. Yeah. I love that. So so I would give, I would give, from an experience standpoint, I'd give them both like a pretty high, you know, eight, <laughs> but for different reasons. Because uh, I, I enjoy them. Uh, differently, um, but I do find uh, mid journey to be a little bit more engaging. Maybe that the whole process. And, but we do have to bear in mind that this is the paid mid journey experience. Yeah, yeah. In, that's in the true. in the free freemium version, it's it's less. Yeah, and yeah, you have to point. use public servers, and it it is a different experience. So good point. I can't I can't wait to see what Dali is like as a paid experience as well. And I think I think today has shown us that the majority of requests you will be able to use Dali and you will be able to yeah. get roughly what you're looking for. It'd be interesting to now spend some time in it to see how you can change individual images. Um, but it's also given me enough interest to go back into a, the, the the paid version um, if there is such a thing anymore and, sure, sure. and investigate. From a from a realistic standpoint. Um, I think they both did a great job. Like they were, I think they were both equally as good from 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 the realistic aspect, the artistic aspect, the creativity aspect. I really think that they're at par. They were just different. Even though it was the same prompt, the the result was just different. But I I have a hard time saying you know that one is better than the other. I I don't know where where your That's take is on that. Let's uh, let's ask for some comments. Yeah, and I think anybody watching or listening, if you have a second to to tell us which one you think produces better images, we'd love to hear. Yeah, but I'm similar to you, Santi. I think both have some amazing pros. Yeah, I'm not seeing too many cons. No, uh, not the, really, because the, because they're just they're just producing really yeah. eye catching art. And and even though even though Dali did create pencil art that really does look like somebody sat down and did it whereas mid journey's pencil art feels more computer generated agreed yeah they were both fascinating like like a, again just because they are different i can't say that one was better than the other because the 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 the, the quality of the art uh, uh, so this is this is a great episode but at the same time it's hard because i can't really scale it like i can't say hey yeah, I'm going to give them a five. Um, I feel like they both deserve a 10. <laughs> it's just that they're different. It's a different experience, right? Um, I almost feel like, to your point, if you're really trying to find the right image, I think you need to use both platforms. Yes. Knowing I mean, that you're going to get a different output, similar, but different. And I got, by the way, I do love the fact that we didn't say, we didn't specify any gender. We just said a software engineer and Dolly twice gave us a female. 
And I find that fascinating. I think that alone is worth an extra point because if yeah, it's doing doing it that there, where else is it? Is it? Yeah. Is is it doing the same thing? So that's that's a real bonus. Dolly gets an eleven on that yeah. <laughs> on a scale from one to ten. All right. Well, listen, this was a lot of fun. Uh, we're we're we'll do some uh, post production so that we can kind of bring the uh, images up for folks to actually see and and. Um, and admire. In fact, uh, tell you what, I will bring the images. Uh, I'll lay them out as follows. We'll put uh, we'll put all the Dolly images on the left side of the screen. We'll put the Mid Journey images on the right. Um, and then, uh, by all means, in the comments section, tell us what you think. Like, what, who, which would you choose? Which platform do you prefer? Uh, and you know, is there something that you saw? Uh, or a takeaway that you had that we didn't cover that you you want to mention. We'd love to hear from you. And so, Sam, I really want to thank you for this. This is awesome. I love the fact that you do this for a living. <laughs> I think it's fascinating that this is part of your job. And so, uh, but I really appreciate you coming on today. Folks, this is a good time to remind you to subscribe. Subscribe to Tech Unmuted on your favorite podcast platform. That means all your audio platforms as well as YouTube so that you can see some of these visuals that we're referring to. But until next time, stay curious, stay connected. See you next time. Visit fusionconnect.com slash tech unmuted for show notes and more episodes. Thanks for listening.